Here is a really old, presumably first-generation LCD flat-screen television. It's made by a company called Sky. Never heard of them. And I've been using this as a preview monitor for some of my more advanced video productions. But it has always been a very clumsy device to use because, number one, being so old, it is very heavy and it is, well, not exactly compact. Also, it's missing the stand, so I've been using this uh, in combination with this chair. I've recently found a much nicer, much newer, much better TV that's going to be so much more handy. So I'm going to get rid of this thing. And before I do, I thought it would be interesting to just document the inside of what looks to be a first-generation LCD flat-screen TV. Here is the back of the unit. All the connections are down in here. There is a big IEC power socket and a hard power switch. You don't see that on modern TVs anymore. VGA input, component input, DVI input. So this has both VGA and DVI. What it does not have is HDMI. It's too old for that. Over here, there are two SCART connectors, headphone jack and the antenna input. Here is the TV with the back taken off. And I guess you're all going to agree Compared to a modern TV, it's quite crowded in here. They did put some effort into the speaker system. Two-way speaker system, woofer and tweeter, 10 watts and 8 ohms each. Just a little capacitor as a crossover, as you can see. What would nowadays be on the main board is actually spread across two boards on this one. Over here, we have the SCART inputs right there. This is the tuner. And then this is the audio amplifier for the speakers. These are the speaker outputs. That's the Class D amplifier chip. Over here, this is pretty much the main board. Main processor does have a nice big heatsink on it. We do have the component inputs. Those are, of course, analog. DVI is digital, and then VGI is also analog. Here is something you don't see in a modern TV anymore. A chip in a dual inline package, which is socketed. And this is probably an EEPROM that contains the programming, the uh, software, firmware for this TV. So another processor right there. Don't know what that is. That's probably a RAM chip. And this up there is the output to the display panel. It does actually say LVDS on there. It does look quite different compared to uh, modern TVs. I think the modern TVs do have a lot more connections on the LVDS connector. So that's interesting. The power supply is really quite something. You've already seen the IEC socket and power switch. There are one, two, three filter chokes. And the power supply does look pretty massive as well. Lots of heat sinking, big, big cores, as you can see. This is really quite something, and it has to be. This TV does need a lot of power. Now, something that I found, <laughs> the TV was about to fail anyways, because, uh, well, look at that. This capacitor right there is bulging. And there are quite a few more capacitors buried under that heat sink. And with this one being bad, of course, all the other ones are questionable as well. So this TV did have a problem after all. So that's the power supply. And as I step back, now the LCD panel is uh, not this thing. This is just a cage. This is just a chassis. 
And under this chassis, which is made from really, really thick metal, under this uh, chassis right here is the inverter for the backlight of the LCD panel. That's quite a big thing, as you can see. But that's about it, pretty much, for right now. The TV has been stripped down to the chassis. I'm now going to turn it around. And here is the screen, which I don't intend to take apart. This is the back of the LCD panel. I already took off the shielding covers, so we can see the LCD interface board right there. Again, that LVDS connector only has a very few wires going to it. As you can see, a lot of spaces are unoccupied. And then over here we have the inverter, which is quite a high power device. It does say 24 volts on this connector. And as you can see, there are only three colors. So we got a lot of positive, a lot of ground, even more positive and even more ground. This is probably all 24 volts. So as you can see, instead of using very thick wires, they used multiple wires. And then this yellow over here might be like an enable feature for the inverter or something like that or dimming or whatever. Then over here are the connections to the actual cold cathode fluorescent tubes. Nicely insulated. The panel itself was made by uh, Shi Mai Optoelectronics, made in Taiwan. And I guess that's pretty much all about it. As I said, I don't really feel like messing with the mercury in the backlight CCFLs right now, so I'm not going to take the panel itself apart. So that's it. Thank you for watching.